Attempt 312. I find the entire cave is on fire again. You know, after a certain point in these expeditions, I really can't help but wonder if it's my being here. Hmm. Well, you know what they say. Build a man a fire and he's warm for a day. Set the man's house on fire and... This is fine. Warning, the hipster's neck does not actually condone arson. In fact, arson is really, really bad, and if you do it, hipster's neck will not testify on your behalf. Please play with matches responsibly. Greetings, everyone. This is the Spelunker Snack. Today's bit of indie excellence is also a bit of a recent feature, still technically an early access as of this writing, but it's already a robust game with limitless challenges to offer. Released in September of 2019, Noita immediately captured my interest by introducing its unique engine, named the Falling Everything engine, and how all things in the game are essentially handled down to a dust-like pixel level, giving things like water a realistic flow and fire an equally realistic bend. That alone was enough to sell me on this roguelike game, but what I uncovered was untold hours of triumph and bitter defeat. There isn't much in the way of a story, per se. You play as a wizard, possibly an elemental wizard if you use one of the mods that the devs made for the game, and go into a cave, looking for riches and ever-increasing power. The real objective? Get to the bottom of this. Uh, literally. Or as far as we can manage, being that it's a roguelike where 99% of the time the enemies will become ludicrously unmanageable a few areas before the bottom. I would know. I've made it to the final area, and I, uh, uh, I couldn't do it. Every attempt you'll end up learning something new, that much is for certain. To start, the game looks good. It uses simple retro feel to disguise the complex engine that the world's actually running on. And wood looks like wood, and metal looks like metal, you'll never really have to wonder what it is you're looking at. And if for some reason you are left wondering, however, you can hover the mouse over the item in question and it should tell you what you're trying to parse. That should still be rare though. The magic effects in particular are some of my favorite things to see in motion, particularly when they're mine and no one else's. As for the music, well, there really isn't any. Or rather, I should say, there isn't much. Most of the time, it'll actually just be an ambient hum, and your ears really should be on the lookout for telltale signs of danger like projections, explosions, and everything else currently being on fire. Also, they have this really cool effect when you're underwater, you will actually hear the sound effects and music tracks as if they were actually muffled, like you're actually underwater. That's a really nice and immersive effect. And yes, that pun was intended. Like any good roguelike, you start the game with a standard loadout most of the time. Two magic wands, basic gear, and a bottle of water. One wand fires a limitless stream of standard attack magic that operates on a simple gravity pull, and you'll want to find a replacement for this as soon as possible on account that it does as much damage as tossing frozen peas. Your other wand is a three-limit use wand that throws bombs, which can blast through the destructible terrain, a major feature of the game, or destroy troublesome enemies with a large destructive blast. Then as you spelunk, you'll kill monsters, who each drop gold nuggets, find wands and some traps, potions and other items as you continue exploring. You'll also find things that you are happier not finding, like explosive barrels and automated turret tanks that eat you alive if you aren't prepared, hence the roguelike part of this equation. Now there are some variations from the above. In Daily Run, you'll be given a set loadout and a set map. These change daily, as the name might imply. Also, as said, the game is open for mods, which can wildly change the experience. My personal favorite one actually comes with the game and gives you themed sets, like the Fire Wizard who starts the fire-themed wand, immunity to fire, and oil blood as perks. These are tons of fun to play with, with the exception of the Eldritch Wizard, whose power set is so completely worthless that if you spawn as one, you really might as well just commit Sudoku and start over. And as this game grows in popularity, I really hope to see some other clever modding attempts too. As you progress down, areas will be broken up by Holy Mountain Halls, where you'll get a full health refresher and a recharge to all active wands. Uh, assuming you don't get attacked by the random super powerful spirit monster who randomly appears in there and is totally, totally unfair forced run enders. <clears throat> There will also be a store area where you can trade your hard-earned gold for either spells, which you can edit to wands while in the Holy Mountain Zone, or entirely new wands. 
While expensive, these can supplement the treasures that you'll find in the active fields. Then lastly, you'll be granted one of three perks. Some of these, like Never Skip Leg Day and More Hate, are worthless, and you should never, ever waste a valuable perk slot on something as worthless as them. Others, like Explosion Immunity and Projectile Repulsion, are amazing and will greatly assist you on your way. Explaining the gameplay from here can get a bit tricky, as the world map actually reconfigures itself with each playthrough, and the items and monsters you'll find in each area can vary wildly from any one run to the next, daily runs notwithstanding. But broadly speaking, you'll ultimately want to find two or three really strong attack wands and one or two utility wands, as you can carry a maximum of four at any time. I like ones with high speed and lots of bouncing because it limits how accurate I need to be to actually hit something, or ones like lightning which destroy even strong monsters in just one or two hits. As for utility, Chainsaw, Laser, Void, and Drill are your best bets, since they can get you out of tight situations easily or deal with melee range attacking enemies. And since environmental hazards like acid are nigh omnipresent, you'll want a bottle of water to splash over yourself if you get some of that stuff on you, or you can use it to neutralize magma pits or other hazards. Some other flasks can be situationally useful, but now it's time for stuff you'll wish you knew in your first run, but didn't, as the game doesn't tell you. First of all, if certain combinations of potions are sprayed together into a little pool, they can sometimes combine together to form something new. Try experimenting for yourself on this one, as the results can be quite enlightening. 2. Some enemies naturally fight among themselves. Humanoid enemies, in particular, tend to be hostile toward non-human monsters, and you can sometimes sneak by while they're distracted, or turn their scuffle into an easy win for you to steal the plunder. 3. You can edit wands in the Holy Mountain Zones by clicking and dragging their spell slots. I admit it took me a frankly embarrassingly long time to figure that out, so I missed the utility of spells for many of my early game hours. Also, a particular perk can let you edit wands anywhere to customize on the go, and if you can't get anything better than that, it is a worthy perk to have. 4. Teleportitis is a terrible perk, and may help you speed through some zones quickly if you have the health to feed it, but it will ultimately get you killed and possibly render some areas unwinnable. You will be auto-killed by this perk, almost certainly. And 5. Take your time to explore each area, rather than rushing. You can find additional health pickups and tools if you do. This is especially true in the early areas, as it's worth the added effort and will make some later areas easier as a result. So, how can this early access game be improved upon? I mean, for starters, I know it's a roguelike and difficulty is to be expected. Maybe dial it back just a little bit? It almost feels like you absolutely require to have some perks in order to make any progress in certain fields. Or the drill wand. Also, a way of testing wands before taking them to the field would be welcome too. Maybe make wands unlimited use while in the Holy Mountain Zone? Or maybe an experimental mode where you can combine different spells together just in order to see how they work. That way, testing different combos wouldn't feel so risky when you're in the thick of things. Also, I know I mentioned the aforementioned spirit boss monster, and they spawn when enough of the Holy Mountain Zone bricks have been destroyed. But here's the thing. Monsters can do that independently of the player, and then we have to suffer for it. A means of tracking who's actually destroying the bricks and thus summoning the blatantly overpowered run-ending creature would be a huge step in the right direction. And lastly, maybe it could try just letting me win just this one time! Ugh. Or it could just, you know, not do that. Back to the start then. Jokes aside, Noita is an amazing experience every time I play it. Experimenting with different wands and abilities, trying my luck against tough challenges, seeing the different zones you can explore, all of it makes up an amazing and fiendishly challenging roguelike experience. I love finding new treasures and combining different abilities to see how I can make them work. I love challenging the game over and over, and I look forward to the day sometime in the future when the stars and planets align and I manage to join the 13% or so who have managed to obtain the game's sole achievement which comes from beating the actual game. It's a delightful experience, and if anything I said today makes it sound even remotely fun, you should get it too. It's available on PC through many distribution channels, and here's a fun challenge for the aspiring Let's Player. Try to pronounce the enemy names. Yeah, that should keep you working for a while. This has been The Wizard's Neck, and I hope you enjoyed my suffering. No, I'm kidding.
If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. For more content just like this every week, be sure to tap that subscribe and bell icon too. Leave a comment down below telling me about your amusing or frustrating runs through the depths. You can follow me on Twitter, at HipsterSnack, or on Subscribestar if you're feeling really generous. All relevant links will be found in the description of every video. Join me here every week for more obscure games and indie excellence, and I'll see you there.